A wonderful morning to everyone who has joined today. From managing family, we would like to extend our warm welcome and sincere thanks to all our customers, partners, and users who are interested in our solutions. Unified endpoint management and security is one of the main focus areas of Manage Engine. Let me introduce myself. My name is Surya, and I'm a product specialist with Manage Engine. I take care of endpoint management products, including Desktop Central. I'm a seasoned technical support engineer, assisting customers in their implementation, consultation, and troubleshooting in case of any challenges. And followed by me, I will be joined by Ruben, uh, my colleague, who will be explaining us about how to do app management and control using, I mean, for modern management devices. So once again, welcome to uh, the Desktop Central training. In uh, yeah, we are on the week three of this training schedule, and today we will be talking about app deployment and removal. We'll also talk about application control for legacy and modern endpoints. Um, so the first week we already completed patch management. We also have seen about endpoint security. So in case if you miss them, you can um, view the link below and in that we'll have the information about the previous trainings. And if you are interested in the forthcoming trainings, you can also register for the same in the same link. And also note that uh, the participation certificate include uh, series one, two, and three. So visit the website given below uh, and you can get more information on the same. So yeah, today it is about application control, application deployment, removal, and uh, this is for both legacy and modern endpoints. We'll discuss about that in the following session. So we'll quickly look at the agenda for today's session. So we'll give you a little overview of what Desktop Central is all about. We'll let you know how to get your upgrades for business application using the templates we have in Desktop Central. We'll also talk about deploying new commercial applications like Office 365 to legacy devices. We'll see how to deploy applications through self-service portal for users who are not administrators in their machines. We'll also talk about silent installation and of applications in mobile devices and controlled app updates as well. We'll finally look at some Q&A. Uh, we'll be able to answer our, your questions. We have a panel members there to um, answer them as well. To start with, we'll see the, um, this is a traditional example of a distributed workforce. So John here is an IT manager who needs to manage endpoints in different locations. They're all managed um, with different networks. So they either connect through VPN or through internet, and they all have different ranges of bandwidth as well. So this is, a, these are all ha managed under a head office uh, where it, which is an, in Dallas where they also have some endpoints. So they need to manage endpoints that are local as well as in WAN a wide area networks as well. And the same example uh, for, I mean, in KZ, they have a, a cloud environment where they have computers hosted in different locations and also in their AWS and other cloud environments, we'll be able to manage them as well. So this is a, example of a distributed workforce, and we'll see how the Stop Central can handle all these types of uh, workforce. So what is Desktop Central? Uh, it is a UEM solution. We call it a unified endpoint management solution. So a famous um, search development company called Forrester defines unified endpoint management as the products that provide a centralized policy engine for managing and securing employee laptops and mobile devices from a single console. So a single console should be able to manage different devices um, of an employee. So what's the UEM edition in Desktop Central is all about? It is a combination of uh, client management with mod MDM and modern management for Windows 10 and Mac OS devices. Along with that, we also offer OS deployment. So this is the 
uh, features offered in a traditional management where we have patch management and application management using uh, EXEs and MSIs. We have configuration where we deploy batch files or um, settings to computers using um, registry settings and things like that. We also have inventory where we'll be able to gather the details of hardware, software details. We have remote control features, OS deployment features, and other features that we are offering under, under tools like Wake on LAN and things like that. The same um, features when it comes to modern management will be as controlled OS update. We'll have options where we can deploy apps from uh, Microsoft Store or Mac for Apple Store. We can deploy or distribute profiles uh, to modern devices. We have asset management, remote control, OS reset and recovery. We also have geo tracking and geofencing capabilities as well. So combining all, we'll be able to manage them under unified endpoint management offered by Desktop Central. So these are all the different awards that we have gathered, uh, we, we've achieved in the recent years. You can visit the website below for more information about it. Um, so we've been speaking about endpoints. So what an endpoint is. So in, an endpoint could be any of these devices. It could be a laptop, it could be a desktop, it could be mobiles and tablets, point of sale devices, even browsers and servers are considered as endpoints. And what operating systems are supported in Desktop Central is what we're seeing here. We support Windows, um, Mac OS, and different flavors of Linux as well. And these are all the different flavors of operating systems that we are supporting. You can see we support both workstation and servers under Windows. We have Mac OS, different versions of them, and different flavors of Linux as well. So we'll talk about how to manage applications for legacy devices first. So what are all the challenges we are facing in software deployment? So we need to ensure that the business applications are available for all the users to install at their own convenience. We'll have to enable a strict mode, which means we'll have to ensure that um, none of the users can install software that are not approved or restrict messy software. And we also might get too many software deployment related requests if you are an IT admin, you might have come across these scenarios. So we'll talk about how to restrict those types of requests as well. So how a software deployment normally work? Okay, so to deploy any software, we must have a repository where we can save this software. So it could be a network share or it could be a repository where we should be able to fetch uh, the software from. So in Desktop Central, we'll be able to gather these details directly from the repository, and we can deploy it to the client machines that are communicating directly with the Desktop Central. In a distributed workforce, we, we mentioned that a computer could be in any location. So as we talked about, it could be um, on a different office. So in such cases, we have an option called a distribution server, which can get these software from a network share or the HTTP, it will have it within your own store and then distribute it to the client machines in that office. That way we'll be able to minimize bandwidth consumption in those offices as well. So this is a simple architecture about, about it. We'll talk about uh, these things in detail as we move on. So we talked about a repository and we said there are two types of repositories. So network share is where the computers that are having access uh, to the directory can access the uh, shared location and get the software deployed to it. That is mostly the LAN agents. They don't have um, a size limit, so they can have as many software as you want in the network share and you can deploy it from there. Uh, the other advantage of um, that is, I mean, you can have as many, uh, machines managed there, and you'll also be able to set up and maintain your own network share. When it comes to HTTP repository, we can manage both LAN and WAN agents. So when computers are outside the network, they don't have access to your network share. So in such cases, we can use HTTP repository to fetch that and uh, get them deployed. We do have a limit there. We can um, upload only seven gigs of data, and we'll also, the advantage is that you don't have to do a setup or maintenance. It's a default directory, which will be created by Desktop Central as you set it up. 
So we'll uh, talk about um, how to deploy a simple application like Microsoft Teams to legacy devices. Uh, so we use templates for this purpose. I hope everyone can uh, see this. So I'm just opening my console where I have software deployment. So here we'll have um, templates. So there are thousands of templates already tested by our team and we have them all added. Um, so you can see that we have already created packages from the templates as well. So if you need any application, it could be a non-commercial application or commercial application you can see if it is already available here in our templates. So in this example, we need Teams. So I'm going to search for Teams. So we can see that Microsoft Teams for um, X64 is available. So I can create a package away from here. So this package, as I mentioned, we have a team who downloads these software. We'll have them test in an uh, operating system level. We'll see if it is installing properly. And we have them added in our templates. So you can find that the switches are already added. We have the information about where to download the software and all necessary details already added here. So you just simply create a package and then deploy it to your machines. So I have already created Teams package and uh, have it in my list. To install it to, uh, let's say, to a group of computers or to all the computers in my domain. So I'll just name this as Teams deployment. I've already added it to my packages list, so I can see that Teams X64 is there. So I can install it from here. In case if I want to install it as an administrator, I have an option where I can add my admin credentials to the credential manager and choose that. In case if I want to schedule it, let's say I don't want to be wanted to deploy immediately. I want to deploy the configuration, but it should be deployed to the machines at a particular date and time. I can schedule it. We'll also talk about deployment policies. So deployment policy is something where you can um, create a schedule on what week and what day the software or, or patch should get installed. We'll be able to notify the users um, before deploying the software in case if you would like to inform them about closing the software or application before the software gets installed or, or a restart policy that you want to employ along with this particular deployment. Those things are possible using the deployment policy. So you can select that and you can choose what computers are going to get this particular software. So it can be deployed to the whole domain or it can be deployed to an OU or an AD group or to a single computer or to a group that you have that you can create within desktop central so once you have these you can just add your custom group here and you can deploy it to them we'll also have retry options here so once this is enabled for example you deploy the software to 100 computers and if 20 were off at that time instead of telling you that it's failed in those machines we'll be able to deploy the software when the machine comes back on and uh, we'll be able to deploy it using a refresh policy, which is every 90 minutes, the agents will communicate with the server to see if new configurations are available. So they can fetch the software at that particular time and it will get it installed. So one way or other, we can ensure that a software has been tried on all the targeted machines that you are providing here. So that's how we deploy a, any application by creating a package from our templates. In case if there is a new version of the same software available, in such case, you can just modify this configuration with the new package and deploy it. But if you want to automatically do that, we also have a self-service portal where you can publish the software and we'll have an option to automatically update these templates when new versions are available. So it'll be updated with new version and the users can install it themselves. So that is also something we can make use of uh, when it comes to software deployment. So moving on, we'll, uh, as I mentioned, there are lots of templates available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. That's what it is about. We'll also see how to deploy a commercial application like Office 365 to legacy devices. So 
what we have in our templates are mostly non-commercial software. When it comes to commercial software, we cannot add it to the templates for some uh, reasons like the URLs that we have to provide are dynamic and it needs subscription details and things like that. Um, so in such cases, you can create your own package as well. So even if you have, an, have a business, uh, I mean, in-house application, uh, you can add your own package there as well. It could be an EXE type application or an MSI type application. So you can choose what package you want to deploy. And you can choose whether it's a commercial application or a non-commercial application. In case if you are uploading the files from a network share, you can use the shared folder option. But again, only the computers who have access to the network share will get the software deployed. The rest of them will throw an error message that they can't get the necessary files from the software. I mean, from the repository. So if you have computers in different locations who don't necessarily have access to a shared folder, in such cases, it's better we choose the local computer option, which is going to make use of the HTTP repository. Then you have to upload the necessary file. So when it comes to Office 365, we have a document already created on how to deploy these files. So um, we will. It's not just about deploying the software. We'll have the options to even configure the software. For example, you can choose what type of um, volume license or what type of licensing you're going to have, what particular product you want to install. Everything is already defined by Microsoft for this particular Office 365 example. So you can uh, configure and get a customized XML file, which will decide what language you want, what um, updates um, you want to get them installed automatically you'll have to choose uh, the option to um, whether you want um, visio or access um, excel so whatever products you want to install you can choose them all so basically you can configure your installation and the product settings here and you can get an xml file out of this so this xml file will decide what or how the installation is going to perform on the client machines. So we can add all the necessary files here. So basically you will download uh, the Windows deployment toolkit and we'll have them uh, extracted and saved in a particular location. From there, you can use the setup.exe file as well as the configuration file and you can just upload them here. And when it comes to the uh, installation command, We'll have to provide the exe files as well as the configuration dot xml file that you have created so I've, um, let me show you the command and we'll be able to explain a little bit on how it is going to work in the client side for example if you are going to deploy it through a network share you'll have to provide the network path as well as the exe file and along with that the configuration dot effect dot xml's location as well and we'll have to provide them all in one single command in case if it is um, the http repository in such cases you don't have to provide the path of that particular file you can simply provide the exe file and uh, the location of the configuration file so if both are there in the same directory you don't even have provide that so when it comes to uh, the client side deployment it will call the setup.exe file and it will use the configuration.xml file and get it installed uh, based on what set you have provided in the xml so that how you deploy any applications like office 365 to the client machines uh, we might have noticed that we also have pre-deployment activities here so before deploying the um, software in case if you want to perform any pre-deployment activities like you may want to see if the software is already installed if it is installed you may want to skip the installation so those kinds of pre-checks uh, you can see if it the software, uh, I mean, if the computer has enough space to handle that software installation, if it doesn't have that, it will skip the installation in that machine. So those kinds of pre-checks are possible. Maybe you want to copy a file to a particular directory, or you may want to make registry changes. 
changes or uninstall older version and install newer version. So all these types of pre and post deployment activities can be carried out along with the software deployment. So when you deploy a package from the central, it's not just the installation of the software. So the pre, the post deployment activities and the installation of the software, everything will be happening in a single shot. So that's how software deployment works in um, desktop central. So this is the example on how to create an XML files. The same thing we showed you earlier. We have them all created here in the slide as well. So we'll quickly look at some uh, questions uh, that are frequently asked when it comes to deploying applications. So John is receiving a lot of help desk requests to install various business applications. How can this be minimized? So this is uh, one of the common scenarios we face, right? So we will be getting lots of requests for a software, which is already approved and it can be used for, uh, it can be deployed to the uh, users upon their request. So those list of software, if you have that, you can add it to the self-service portal. And uh, this, from the self-service portal, the users can install it themselves. So self-service portal is where you can publish the software instead of having to deploy it every time when the user requests it. So you can publish it to a group of computers and all those users in the computers, they can open the self-service portal on their end. They will see all these software that you have published. They can choose the ones they want and they can install it themselves. By this way, we'll be able to minimize the request that we get for self-service, I mean, uh, for software deployment. So this is how the self-service portal looks like on the client side. So it will list you all the software that you have published. They can choose to install it. You have, you can see that we also have the option to request for this uh, software. So instead of just deploying, I mean, installing it, you can just ask the user to request for it. And once you approve it, we'll be able to deploy it. For this particular feature to work, you need self, self uh, I'm sorry, service desk plus, which is a ticketing tool that we offer from Manage Engine. In case if you have that, the software that the user wants, they will be requesting it, they will give a reason for it, and they will send the request. It will automatically create a ticket on service desk plus. So any technician on service desk plus, they will be able to see this request, they can approve it. Once it is approved, it's going to get installed in the client machines. So this is about a common error messages that we get when we deploy software through Desktop Central. So the first error message where it says the system cannot find the path specified or access denied. This is usually the case when the user doesn't have access to a network share or the network share might have been enabled with credentials where the users don't have enough access to. So in such cases, they might get an access denied message. So to resolve it, it's better to deploy it using the local computer option for computers that doesn't have access to network share. So they can easily get the software from the HTTP repository, as we discussed earlier, and they can get them installed. The second message is pretty self-explanatory. So no silent switch or invalid silent switches. So any software that you deploy from Desktop Central, it's going to need a a silent switch because the silent switch will ensure that the users in the client side, they don't have to intervene with the installation. So they might be busy with their work and the installation will completely happen silently without any user intervention needed. Um, so we, in case if that particular silence switch is not provided or if the silence switch provided is not valid, in such cases you will get these error messages. We'll quickly look at Desktop Central's architecture. So we just, talked about software deployment. So when it comes to Desktop Central as a whole, what you are looking at is the on-prem architecture of Desktop Central, where the server is hosted in your headquarters or in, in your preferred location, where you have to set up your own machine and install the ser server. And in case if you have an active directory, we'll be able to integrate with it and get the details of your AD groups and OEs as well. So this works as a client server model. So you'll have to install the desktop central agents in the client machines. So the agents can communicate either directly to the desktop central server. In case of a remote office, they can use the distribution server, 
which is an additional component, which will download all the required patches and software over the internet and use local intranet to distribute it to the client machines. The other important component is a secure gateway. So if you have computers outside the network that are communicating over the internet, we strongly recommend the secure gateway server, which is a component that you can install in a Windows machine and place it in your DMZ so that you can host it securely in the internet. So any requests you got from a client that is in the internet, like work from home computers, or even in other offices that are connecting over the internet, the secure gateway will forward the request to the desktop central server. So this is how we manage, uh, this is the architecture of the on-prem version of Desktop Central. We have also come up with a SaaS-based offering. So whatever we saw here under Desktop Central Server, the Secure Gateway Server, these are all managed by our team. So you just um, sign up based on your location, a data center will be hosted. So the server will be up and running. You just sign in, install the agents and distribution server, and you can just start managing them. So you can make use of the SaaS-based offering as well. The below link will help you sign up there. So following this, the app management in mobile devices, uh, my colleague Ruben will, will be taking care. Uh, Ruben, yeah, over to you. Thanks, Surya. All right, let's see about the app management in mobile devices now. And before we move on, please confirm if you're all able to hear my voice and view the presentation. Please confirm that in the, by commenting in the chat section. All right, thanks for confirming. All right, let me show you how you can install and manage business apps through our MDM solutions. And to know that, it is better to understand how exactly the app management works. And as to explained from the software repository part, even MDM also have their own app repository created for every account. Either you go with a cloud-based solution or on-premise, you will have your own app repository created. And in order to distribute the required applications on a mobile phone, you will have to first add them to your repository. So be it a store app or your own enterprise application, you have to add them to the repository. And when you distribute to the end devices, when it comes to a store app, like a Play Store app, the app installation will be initiated from the appropriate store locations. You do have an option to choose whether you want to download the app from the store, which is there in the United States or in the United Kingdom. So you can choose the, uh, the country from which the app needs to be added. And accordingly, the app installation will be initiated. And when it comes to enterprise app, that is your own application, the app files will be downloaded from your MDM instance. And let me show you how you can add a store app to a repository and how you're going to distribute that to your devices. And for that, let me log into the MDM portal. And as you know, Desktop Central is a unified solution. You have all these modules on the top, like patching, software installation, imaging, and all. And in order to add the required store app, you can go to the MDM tab, go to the management section. You will have the app repository here. So under management is where you do all the uh, management tasks, like creating group, creating profiles, adding applications, and even sending out announcements and so on. And now let me show you how we can add a Play Store app. And for that, it's very simple. You can go to app repository, click on add app, choose Apple's store app. First, let me show you how we can add an Apple store application to your repository and how we can distribute that to your devices. Now, as I mentioned, when you try to add the store application, you can choose the appropriate store location. Like say, if I want to add it from UK, I can choose the location. If I want to do it from Australia, so I can choose the appropriate location as I wish. And search for the app name. Like say, let me add Zoho create an app to our repository and then let me distribute that to our devices. You can just click on the app name. And you do have an option to choose whether you would like to automatically remove the app when the MDM profile is removed, meaning when the device goes unmanaged, would you like to automatically remove this corporate app also? Yes, if you so, you can enable this option. At the same time, if you want to prevent the uh, app backup in their personal iTunes or iCloud account, you do be able to enable that restriction as well. So likewise, you can add the required app details and save it to the repository. Once that is done, you can go to groups and devices section. You can go to groups and devices. There you can see the list of groups you have created. I always recommend you to 
test this app deployment on one or two devices first before you go for a, a group based or a bulk deployment mode. So first, let me apply the filter based on Apple. So these are the Apple devices I have. And I'm going to click on actions and I'll choose distribute app. And when it comes to distributing the app, you have two modes, as you see in the bottom. When it comes to installation type, you can either distribute the app catalog. This is similar to that of like self service portal, which is there in uh, desktop center for computers. Same way, you do have app catalog option for mobile phones under the MEMDM app. So first, let me show you how you can do it through the app catalog mode. Then we'll discuss on the silent installation type. So you can choose the required app you wish. And you do have an option to notify the users via email that they will get the navigations, how they can go to MEMDM app and how they can go to the, uh, go to the uh, app catalog to initiate the app deployment part. So let's say I've distributed the app like this. I've distributed the app catalog. On, on the end user end, the users can go to the app catalog section where they will see the list of app being distributed by the admin. And when they click on install, it will prompt the user to enter their personal iTunes account. Because I have added the Play Store app directly to my repository and I've distributed to the end users. So that if I distribute the app through this method, every user needs to provide their own personal iTunes account in order to complete the deployment. And the app gets installed. And as you know, when it comes through this way, through the app catalog mode, um, every device needs to have be provisioned with an iTunes account and user intervention is required to complete the app installation part. So that is one type of app deployment through our MDM. Second, you can also silently deploy as having a management tool like this should make the administrative job easy. That's why we do support the silent app deployment part where an admin can also choose or add the required set of baseline app. Like say a user should have Zoho meetings, Zoho creator, click and so on. Like the required business app needs to be automatically installed right after the devices are onboarded. So that's why you need to have a silent deployment mode, uh, which needs to be added to your portal. And as a prerequisite, uh, when it comes to silently deploying the app to your devices, for Apple, you need to integrate with Apple Business Manager in order to sync or approve the app for silent deployment mode. And when it comes to Android, you have to integrate with Manage Google Play service because when when you distribute an app, every uh, app needs to have an uh, account details updated. And when you do it directly from the Play Store, it needs a personal account. Whereas when you add them through ABM portal or manage Google Play services, it will use the corporate Apple ID or corporate Google ID, and it will install the, uh, the application silently on all the devices. Let me show you how you can do that. And as I mentioned, as a prerequisite, you need to have an Apple Business Manager or a Google account. And for Apple devices, the devices need to be supervised. Supervised is a mode of enrollment that you will get complete access on the Apple devices. And you will know about the onboarding process in the upcoming training series. And when it comes to Android, it's very simple, just needs to be about Android 5.0 or later version. And this is the workflow for silently deploying the app on your mobile devices. You have to integrate your MDM server with the Apple Business Manager portal or uh, the Manage Google Play service. And then you have to add or approve the required app to your repository and then distribute the devices. And when you distribute, it will use the appropriate ABM account or Google account and it will silently deploy the application on all the devices. First, let me show you how we could deploy it for. Apple devices. So for that, you go and go to mobile device management tab. You can click on app repository again. Remember before I just went in directly, added the app, which will prompt the users to provide their personal iTunes account. But when you go to Apple app management and integrate your MDM server with Apple business manager portal, it will use the, co the common Apple business manager account information to deploy. And let me log in my ABM app portal and also show you the navigation. So if you're doing it for the first time, you would get an option like this where it will prompt you to uh, log into your Apple Business Manager portal, go to settings, and Apple have even updated their UI now. They can go to ABM tester, click on the server details, and to whichever server you want to integrate with, you can click on the server name. Here, you will have the options to download the token, which needs to be added here. 
That's it. So just need to download the token from your Apple Business Manager account and add it to your Apple App Management section. And then after, you can go to Apps and Books, start searching for the required business apps you wish. Like say I wanted to deploy uh, Zoho CRM or any application, you can just search for it. And so as I mentioned, this is going to use this common ABM account which is signed up here and it will remotely install the app on all the devices. Like say I want to deploy Zoho CRM. And you can click on the app name and it is always better to verify whether the app is device assignable. So only then you can silently deploy the app on the devices without even prompting the users about it. So you can select the app name, choose to which MDM server you want to distribute the app applications to. And Apple does require to enter the number, uh, the quantity for how many devices you're going to distribute the app. Even though this is a free application, still Apple will demand to know the device quantity for how many devices you're going to distribute this application to. So you can mention this way and click on get the app, which in turn will automatically sync to your MDM server. So once the app is added, you can go to app section. You do have app source, so which will tell you how the app has been added to the portal. And so you can consider whatever app has been added through the Apple Business Manager portal can be added this way. Uh, the app. You can choose that uh, using uh, the filter like this, app source sync via ABM. And remember, as I mentioned before, it is always better to uh, select one or two devices, distribute the app first and see how this app deployment works. Then you can go with group-based deployment. Let us assume I have added the Zoho CRM application, tested with one or two devices and made sure this apps are silently getting deployed. Now I'll select all the required groups. Maybe I want the CRM to be applied or installed on all my devices. So I'll select all the group, go to Actions tab, Distribute App, and you can also apply the filter like this, all the Apple uh, store applications, you can just select them in bulk and you can choose silent installation type and then click on select. So then after the app will be remotely deployed to all your devices and the end users will not even get a single prompt. The app will straight away start to install on the devices like this. And they will just see the end result here. So this is how you can integrate your MDM server with Apple Business Manager account, add the required app from ABM portal, like choosing the required app like this, and then distribute the devices from groups and device section. That is how we could do it for Apple uh, devices. And as a recommendation, we ensure the device is connected to a Wi-Fi when the app size exceeds 200 MB, because sometimes the users will, the administrators will say that the app has been uh, successfully added to the repository and then distributed the devices even, but the end device haven't received the app yet. So the main reason it could be uh, if the devices are not connected to any Wi-Fi source, then it will, it will be in the pending state where as soon as the device gets connected to a Wi-Fi network, it will be automatically deployed. And moreover, using our mobile device management profiles, you can also uh, make sure the devices are always connected to a Wi-Fi network, and you do have an option to choose which Wi-Fi network the users should or can connect with. So we'll, we'll discuss about that part in the upcoming training series too. All right, now, to know about the Google, uh, silent app deployment for Android devices, you need to integrate with Manage Google Play Service. So similar to that, you can go to App Repository section. For Apple, we went there to Apple App Management part and then integrated. When it comes to Android, you can go to the Manage Google Play Service. Again, you can either use a G Suite account, if not a non-G Suite, just a normal uh, Gmail ID or else they, it is recommended to have a corporate Gmail ID created and use that for integrating with uh, the MDM server, which in turn will use that appropriate Gmail ID to remotely install the app and all the devices. So I've already integrated with, uh, with my service, but let me show you how the UI would look like. So when you do it for the first time, you will have the option to choose whether you want to integrate with G Suite or non-G Suite account. Once you have to choose the appropriate option, it will take you to the Android to work section and where you can provide your business name and make sure the enterprise mobility management, that is EMM provider is selected as manage engine EMM, which is our uh, token for it. And then you have to mention 
two representative details here as a data production officer and EU representative. This has been made mandatory once after the GDPR law has been passed. So if, uh, if Google wants to report or discuss about any of the upcoming policy changes or on the security aspect, these offices will be contacted for it and will be informed about that. So you'll have to mention these uh, representative details here and you can just uh, read the uh, agreement and approve it for it. Once that is done, it's simple that the registrations will be completed. So all you can do is use your Gmail ID, uh, provide your business name and mention two representative details, which will complete the registration. Once after that is done, if you want to add any store app, you can just go to uh, manage Google Play service, click on add apps like this, which will automatically bring up the Play Store UI here. So we do provide the iframe integration. Either you can come to this tab to add the app. If not, like we did before, you can just go to uh, add app, choose Play Store app. Here it's of the, uh, the Play Store UI would come up and you can choose the required applications here. Let's say I can click on the app name. Remember you have to approve it. So that's what the workflow is. You integrate your Manage Google Play service or ABM portal, and then you approve the app, and then you're going to distribute it. So I'm going to approve the app now. And you can initiate a thing. So once the app is approved from the portal, it's get added to the uh, app repository. If not, you can also manually initiate a sync option from there. So you'll have two options in the portal even. Uh, either to sync apps, if not add application. You can even check the sync time. So once the app is successfully added, like let me search for CRM. This has been added by a managed Google Play service. The time is even updated here. So uh, let me show you one more option. So when it comes to distributing the app, you do have an option to pre-configure certain settings. Like say when I distribute the CRM, I want the location data to be always allowed. I don't want the users to turn off this location service for this application. So whenever the user uses those CRM app on their end, I want to know the location from where they have used it. And also I want the contacts to be always enabled. So you can pre-configure the required app permission. Like an admin can do that and save the app details. Now if I go and distribute the required devices, you, the app will be silently deployed. At the same time, the users will not be able to modify the permissions, whatever the administrator have defined it. So literally this is how the UI would look like where the app installation will be initiated automatically. And then the users uh, go and check the app permissions, they'll not be able to disable those options because the administrators have to configure the app permissions like this. And if it is a BYOD, like a personal device, which is added to our MDM, will have like a separate workspace created like this, like what you see in the middle image, where you will see a separate workspace and all the corporate apps will have a briefcase I can enable to that application name. So here you see a Chrome, which will have, other, which will not have any restrictions. The users can browse to any options they wish. However, when the user access the Chrome within the workspace, they do have uh, certain restrictions and file sharings, everything will be blocked. All right, this is how you'll be able to add the required applications, the repository, and be able to distribute it. One more thing, even if you have your own enterprise app, we do have an option to add them here. You can go to Android Enterprise app, choose the appropriate APK file. So since certain companies do have their own app created for business manage business purposes, so that you can add your own APK or IPA files to your repository and you can choose to which device type you want to deploy the applications to and then save the app details to your repository. So this is how you add your own app and be able to distribute it. And when it comes to uh, app updates, like say initially you added the, Zoho, the your own app like this, uh, this is the Zoho delivery app which we recently launched. So you can add the APK like this, go to groups and devices, distribute the devices and and let's say after a month or two months, uh, you, the app needs to have more options added, like you, there is an update available. And if it is your own application, you can still go add the latest version. And you can actually test this version. Like initially I deployed the version 1.0, and now I'm trying to add version 2.0, like say maybe this, I'll mark it as beta version. What will happen is once after the app 
of the APK details are added, I will have the option to choose whether I want to deploy the production one, like which was initially deployed. If not, I'll choose the beta version, which is now added. And I'm going to test this beta version only to certain devices. Like say I, will have, I do have a test group. I'll uh, update this application on this test group first, to make sure whether the app is working fine. Like say during the testing, if I come across the app versions are corrupted and I want to add a new APK, I can still go and add another version and mark it as the second beta or uh, say uh, 2.1 seems to be corrupted, so I'm adding 3.0 now. And I can give a tag to this. And if this version 3.0 is fine or is working as expected, then I can go and approve. So that whenever I mark this app as approved, it will be automatically updated on all the devices. So when it comes to your own application, you add them to the repository, you distribute the devices, and when there is an update available, you test that app update and then you approve it to your required devices. That's how you can click. Like say I've tested this uh, second beta to a couple of devices and if it's working fine, I'll go and click on approve. And when I approve, you can choose the option, install the app updates automatically on all the devices. That's how you can add your own application and deploy to your devices. Let me quickly show you how you can manage the apps on MacBooks and Windows devices. So Surya might have explained about how you can deploy EXE or MSI based application. But now let me show you how we can deploy the Apex files, the app files through our solution. Same way for, uh, for Apple or MacBooks, you need to have the apps added through AVM again. So if you want to distribute any store applications to a MacBook, the app needs to be added via AVM. And the devices needs to be uh, the version needs to be about 10.10 and above. And you know about how you can add the applications, right? So you can go to Apple Business Manager portal, go to Apps and Books, search for the required app, add it to the repository. And when it comes to selecting the device type, you can go to Groups and Devices, go to Devices section, apply the filter for laptop, and then you can choose the required laptops you have and be able to distribute the devices. Like say, I do have a couple of laptops on my other desktop central server. So you can choose the appropriate device type and then be able to add them to the portal. And for Windows uh, or Mac, Windows 10 laptops, if you want to deploy Apex files, it has to be added through Windows Business Store again. And uh, you can go to App Repository, Windows Business Store to integrate with it. So you can just click on Next use the Azure Administrator account to sign in, and then you can add the required application. So you can remember this way, if you would like to silently deploy the app through MDAM, you have to integrate with the other three tabs for Apple App Management, for Apple devices, Manage Google Play for Android devices, and Windows Business Store for Windows devices. So if you want to silently deploy the app, these three services need to be integrated, and the app needs to be approved from the appropriate portal. Simple. And if you want to add the required app, you can go to uh, shop for my group, search for the required app you wish, or you wanted to add them. And this is how the image will even look like. So you can search for the required app under the store and click on get the app option. Like say, these are the list of apps being uh, listed under the Windows Business Store. I can click on the app name and click on get the app which will in turn be added to the appropriate store locations. So that's how we can add it for Windows and MacBook. And let me show you how we can control the app updates. And before I give you the process, how an admin can control what version needs to be updated and what app needs to be updated, I would, rec I would say that, you know, all the updated version of when it comes to an app, it will be uh, mainly for a patch for an existing security issues. If not, uh, the app would, have been uh, uh, recently updated for certain productivity uh, related enhancements. So it is always recommended to have the updated versions installed on all the devices. And in order to do that, uh, when it comes to an Apple device, it has to be added by ABM and it needs to be device assignable. And apart from this, for Android, it's just going to be about 5.0. And let me show you, when it comes to app updates, you have the direct option like this, where you can go and enable the automate store app updates so that whatever app being distributed through our product will be silently updated whenever there is a new version available in the market. So if the updated version is there in the Play Store, our agent will periodically monitor 
and update the apps on all the devices. In case, if you don't want to update the apps automatically, you can uncheck the option, and this, that's how it will look like, where uh, users can, an admin can go to app repository, where they will see an option like this, one app update is available, and you click on the count, it will show which app needs an update. You can select, or you can click on the app name to update it on all the devices. They, will. they can select and update it. So it's simple, you can either enable the automate app updates option, which will silently update all the application. If not, you can uncheck and you can go to app repository where you can see the list of apps which needs an update. Maybe I'll show it from my standalone MDM. See, there are 17 apps which needs an update. I can click on the app count and the 17 updates will be automatically applied as filter. And now I'll be able to select the required apps I wish to update it on my devices and I can have a control on it. So that's how the app updates can be controlled through MDM. And now let me show you how you can update the operating system on all your devices, so be it an Apple device, an Android, how you can have a control on the OS version. And first of all, I want you to understand what are the disadvantages you might come across when the uh, OS is sort of outdated when it's running on a lesser version or lower version. What are the different voltages you might see? So that will obviously miss out on the security patches. And as you know, older OS version will tend to get slow over time. And moreover, certain app developers will release an application if you are majorly using your own uh, enterprise applications for business purposes. Most of the app developers will uh, develop an app based on the latest OS version. So when you have devices which are running on lesser versions or outdated versions, even though you distribute your own in-house app, which might be a critical app, it might not get installed on the uh, outdated devices. So that's that's one of the reasons you wanna make sure the app or the OS versions are up to date. And as you know, it's loss of productivity and the enterprise app in comparison to what I've just mentioned. And obviously if you don't have a streamlined uh, policy for updating the operating system. If the devices or if the users have their own control on app updates, it might obviously choke the bandwidth. So when all the users comes to the office premises and is respect of the time frame, or say during the critical patching cycle, and that time if all the devices, uh, so, uh, if the users start to update the operating systems, obviously you might feel a bandwidth choke happening on your network. And that is the reason we provide an option for the administrator to schedule and have a streamlined OS update policy where it's just going to be one-time setup. An admin can choose whether you want to immediately update the uh, operating system as soon as Apple or Google releases an update. If you want to immediately update on certain device type, you can go. You can create a policy for it. And for production devices, you say uh, you want to delay it for seven days. So whenever Apple or Google releases an update or Samsung releases an update, you want to first test it on your device, test devices first, and then you want to delay it for seven days for your production environment. And then you want to choose a particular time frame for require certain groups. You do have an option to define it that way. And whether you want to notify the users about the update, you can, you do have an option to enable it. If not, the users can also skip it. Let me show you what are the options available in the portal. So you go to mobile device management tab. Here you have the automate OS update section, where you can create policies for iOS and Android separately. So when it comes to Android, so let's say I'm creating uh, an immediate test group deployment, so where I want to uh, choose 24 by 7 time frame, uh, all the weeks, all the days, and 24 by 7 time frame where I want to silently deploy the update. So I'll create a policy like this, select this OS policy, and deploy, and I will distribute or assign it to uh, my test groups. Yeah, so I'll select the uh, policy which I've created and I go and distribute to the test groups so I have. So whenever uh, a device gets added or whenever uh, uh, the Apple or Android uh, releases an update, it will immediately be deployed on these device types. Now I'll go and create another policy where I'll delay it for seven days and I'll choose the time frame. I want that to be deployed only on weekends. I'll choose Saturdays and Sunday. That too early on the non, um, like uh, in the evening hours, like say from six o'clock till midnight, it's not till morning, 4 a.m. Like basically you can choose the deployment window 
and even if you want to notify the users about it you have the options to enable and if you want the users to skip the deployment you do have options for it so what will happen when i if i distribute a policy like this is right after google releases an update the group whichever i'm going to apply this policy to will not have an option to update the os for for a week like for the first seven days then the users will start receiving a prompt for updating the devices however they do have an option to skip it like and they can skip it for another seven days extra so ultimately for only for two weeks the users will not have uh, the devices uh, updated to the latest operating system but then after it will be silently updated on the device day. so that's how you can create a policy based on your choice and be able to apply to the required groups all right so that is about the app management life cycle for smartphones and modern endpoint now let's have some live question and answers which which has been posted in the chat if not you can even post it now or i'll be able to go through certain uh, questions and i'll uh, update the answers live now so i saw about a lot of questions asked with respect to linux operating system like was it be possible to create uh, a template or package of their own or will it will the self service portal be available for linux it's all there in the pipeline but unfortunately we cannot commit an et at this moment but i would do share a link where you can uh, update your request for any roadmaps or feature requests where you'll be able to um, go to desktop central roadmap and be able to update your feature request in there so can I either i'll put that in the chat box if not you can also search for the required feature types you want it for uh, the operating system or the uh, device type and be able to request for it and uh, for mobile devices as you know like can you have automatic updates and exclude some exception automate app updates will be up, uh, will be applied for the entire device group as of now we don't have an options to exclude certain applications or certain device types but however will this seems to be a valid request which i'll take it forward with our engineer team and we'll keep you updated on the status about it and is it possible to manage apps on ios devices without abm account is it possible to create an account in a region yes you can add it as a app store you don't need to mandatorily have uh, the abm for app distribution the advantage of having abm account is you can silently deploy the app because instead of uh, making the users to enter their own itunes account to deploy the app you can integrate with abm which will use a common account and the app will be silently deployed if you don't have an abm no problem you can go to add app section like i mentioned in the first use case you can search for the required apps you wish and be able to add it to the repository and doing this way will prompt the users to enter their own items account to complete the app deployment and uh, for app the, for software installation generally we do have some request uh, been reported by the users where they would uh, ask if it is possible to install an application using a particular admin credentials or privilege yes you do you can go select a package like this like say you go to a computer configuration you have the options to choose to which uh, by default it will get installed as a system user privilege but if you want to run that uh, application using an administrator credential you do have the options to add the required credential details here and run this above software installation using the uh, appropriate admin credential details all right in case if you do have any more questions please feel free to post them in the chat and if you like the training program please rate us on a scale of 1 to 5 and 5 is being the best and it will uh, you do have the options to uh, use the hashtag slash desktop central or slash free training the social media platform where it will be uh, immense support to us too and the next session it will be about the asset management part for modern devices where uh, we'll describe about how you can track what software and hardware associated to every client and uh, using which what are the application control or hardware level management you can achieve will be discussed in the uh, upcoming week of training series and you will have two sessions one at 6:30 uh, gmt and 11:30 eastern time 
And if you like to have a personalized demonstration, you can always use the below mentioned URL to register for yourself. If not, you can even post it in the chat where our eval team can uh, check the available time frame and schedule a session with our senior engineers where you can uh, report about your uh, use case or the business purposes, how you want to set the product up and what are the key features you're interested in. We'll be able to help you with uh, a proof of concept and also uh, we'll give you a quick walkthrough about what are the modules we support under the desktop central solution. You can always use the below mentioned URL for it. Thanks everyone, thanks for joining uh, the webinar. You have a wonderful day ahead.